Shalom, I have a great, great show for you today. This is going to be incredible. I can't wait. So excited about just an amazing, amazing show. We're going to have so many great things, and I am excited. This show, of course, brought to you by Baron Hirsch Congregation, the greatest show in America. And this is just an example of how. Okay, so let's talk about this show. But first, we're going to talk about who I am. My name is Reed Polachowski. It's great to meet you. This is my family. Okay, my six wonderful children and my wife, beautiful wife, Eliza, who's actually a mayor here in Israel. And she's wearing a red skirt. You can see her and the other children, five wonderful girls and one great son. You can see him. He is the one not smiling, if you can tell. Uh, he's trying to be funny. That's pretty funny. Okay, and um, they're wonderful. That's my family. Okay, and let me show you where we live. I'm not going to show you my house. I'm going to show you where we live. That's not Memphis, Tennessee. It is not Los Angeles, California. It's not New York. It's not Chicago. It is a place called, you can see it right here, Mitzbe Yericho, Israel. That's what's called Mitzbe Yericho. On the map, it's that red balloon there right outside Yerushalayim. And look how beautiful it is here. Do you see these mountains? Do you see the sand, the desert? Oh, it's beautiful, beautiful here. This is where we live. It is incredible, absolutely, absolutely incredible. Well, now that you know who I am, let me tell you what we have on today's show. But most importantly, of course, you can win raffle tickets. And with raffle tickets, you can win prizes. Everybody wins prizes. You want to make sure you have pen and paper to write things down, and then you're going to email them to me, and then you're going to win. And in this show today, besides just winning raffle tickets, we are going to listen to an incredible story about our on the coin Gadol and just how far he would go to make peace. That's number one. Then we're going to have the Hebrew word of the day. We're going to learn a Hebrew word of the day. And if you write it down, send it to me, you can win a raffle ticket. And then we're going to learn about five great rabbis and have a lot of different stories about each of them. It's going to be amazing. And then we're going to play a game together where you can win more raffle tickets. And then we're going to have the last question where you can win even more. Okay, so first thing we're going to do we're going to head over to our story room. This is an incredible place to go. Everybody loves stories. And we are going to listen to a story about Aaron and how far he would go to make peace. Let's see if you would go this far. Think you go this far? Let's find out. Here we go. And watch this. Hello, I have a great story for you. What an amazing story I have for you today. It is about Aaron the Kohen Gadol. Now, Aaron was a very special person. Everyone loved Aaron. And one of the reasons why everyone loved Aaron is because he was Ohev Shalom, the Rode Shalom. He loved peace and he always ran after it to make peace. Let me give you an example. And that example will be our story for today. We're going to talk about two people. They're make believe but there are always people like this, okay? One was named Ruvain and one was named Shimon. And Ruvain once went over to Shimon and said to him, you know, that shirt doesn't fit you so well. Now, Ruvain didn't mean anything insulting about it, but Shimon took it as a very big insult. He said, what? You think my shirt doesn't fit? He was very upset. And he said something very mean back to Shimon. He said, yeah, well, you know what? The only reason why your shirt's thick is because they're so ugly. Oh, he was very, they were both very insulted. And both of them went home. They told their families, do you know what Ruben said? Do you know what Shimon said? We both do, bah, 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 bah. they're back and forth. They said, I'm never going to say anything to him again. Never going to talk to him. So I said, well, maybe, maybe you can look past him. And he said, no, never going to. Well, our own have coined the Cohen Gadol would find out about Ruben and Shimon or people like him that were them were that were fighting. And instead of going over to them and yelling at them or saying, hey, you know, you really shouldn't have said that, or I'm really upset that you said that, instead he would think to himself, how's the best way I can make them have show with each other? They can have peace with each other. How can I do that? And he said, here's the very best way. I know how I'm going to do it. I'm going to tell each of them that the other one is really sorry, but he's embarrassed. And this is what Aaron used to do. You ready? Watch this. He would go over to Ruben's house. He would knock on Ruben's door and say, Ruben, evil. He'd say, well, who's at my door? 
It's Aaron the Kohen Gadol. And my house, what? He would sit Ruben down and he would say, Ruben, I have something to tell you. But I want you to listen, okay? I was talking to Shimon. Now, the truth is, he never spoke to Shimon. I was talking to Shimon, and Shimon was telling me that he said something really mean to you, and he's so sorry, but he's so embarrassed, he can't come to ask forgiveness. Maybe, maybe if you went over and said hello to him, then he would apologize. So Ruben sat, thought it over, and said, oh, you know what? I'll get back to you, Aaron. Thank you very much for coming over. Then Aaron would run over to Shimon's house. Who's at the door? He'd say, it's Aaron the Kohen God. Well, let him in. So Aaron the Kohen God would come into their house, and he would sit down with Shimon, and he would say, Shimon, I have to tell you, I was just at Ruben's house. Now, that part was true. And I was talking to him about your fight. Well, also true. And Ruvain said to me, he's so sorry and so embarrassed about what he said. He's so embarrassed he can't even come over and apologize. That part's not true. But Shimon heard and said, whoa, Ruvain is so sorry and so, well, if he's sorry for what he said, then I should really forgive him. And back at Ruvain's house, Ruvain was sitting there with his family and talking to them and said, you know, if he really feels that way, then I should forgive him. And they would go walk towards each other's house. They'd meet in the middle and each one would think the other one was about to apologize and they would step up and they would say, you know, I don't, 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 you don't even have to apologize. I am so sorry. I feel so bad. I'm so sorry for, for what happened. And they would say, you know, we, we used to be best and they would make up. Now, a couple of days later, they might figure out the trick that Aaron pulled that he told each of them that the other one wanted to make shalom and the families knew the trick. And that's why everyone loved Aaron because they realized Aaron could have gone over to Reuben and said, you should never have said that. They could have gone over to Shimon and said, you should never have said that and get very angry at them and say, I'm the Kohen Gadol. You should listen to me. You can't say things that hurt other people's feelings. But instead of doing that, Aaron would come over and Aaron would say to himself, What's the best way I can make peace between people? And that's what we should be. We should be Ohe Shalom, Virode Shalom. We should be people that love peace and run after peace. Instead of getting in fights and waiting for somebody else to say they're sorry, we should do our very best to make peace ourselves. Isn't that an amazing story and an amazing lesson? Maybe next time we'll tell another story about Aram and show another way that he brought peace. See you guys. Bye bye. What a great story. Okay. Wasn't that incredible? Wait a minute. Where am I standing now? Hold on. This doesn't make any sense. Okay. We got to get back to our favorite backdrop here and make sure we can play a game together. Actually, now we're going to do the Hebrew word of the day. Are you guys ready? So you have to have pen and paper ready to do the Hebrew word of the day. Okay. So here it goes. You ready? We're going to hit it. Here it is. The Hebrew word of the day is machshev. A machshev is a computer. You're probably watching me on a machshev right now. Okay, you see the picture of the computer, machshev. Now write down machshev. Get your pen and paper out, write down machshev. And then what I want you to do is send it to me right here at this email address right here. And then you can win a raffle ticket if you send it right here. Okay, so let's show you the Hebrew word of the day one more time. It is Machshev, okay? Now send that to this email address and you can win a raffle ticket. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is now we're gonna learn about five great rabbis. This is gonna be a lot of stories, so get ready, buckle your seatbelt, because this is gonna be a lot, a lot of fun that you're gonna really like this, okay? You ready? So here we go, get ready. Be excited, you're gonna see me, but you're gonna learn about five great rabbis. Okay, here we go. Hold on. Let's go over there. We got to go over there. Hold on. This is a whole different room we got to get to. Okay, here we go. We are there. Okay, we are going to learn about five great rabbis. We're going to have pictures. We're going to have stories. We're going to have a great time together. You're going to love this. So first of all, we should know that rabbis are not so special. What? 
Why would you say that? It's true. They're just like you and me. Well, maybe I'm a rabbi. Sometimes Rabbi Uri Bush asks himself. That doesn't really make sense to say that rabbis are just like you and me because I'm just saying the same thing then. But it's true. Rabbis aren't special. They don't have anything special inside of them or they don't have any special light coming out of them. Rabbis are, we treat rabbis with kavod, with honor, because they know a lot of Torah and they can help us teach Torah and learn Torah and understand the Torah. But rabbis don't have any special powers. We can't fly. Nope, can't fly. We can't do nisim. We can't do miracles. I can't like take this empty bottle and make it full of water and go blah, 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 blah. Can't do that. But we know Torah. We can help you understand Torah. And that's what makes rabbis special. But not, not that rabbis have any special powers or anything like that. Okay, let's talk about our first rabbi. Now, these rabbis, we have pictures, but they're very, very old. And they're not really pictures. They're drawings because... These rabbis lived thousands and thousands of years ago. The first rabbi we have is a man by the name of Shimon HaTzadik. And Shimon HaTzadik, as you can tell by his name, was a tzadik. Now you can see in this picture, there's this is a great story. Whoa, my hand disappeared. You can see in this picture, the man in the blue standing up is, is Shimon HaTzadik. And this, this is a drawing, obviously. It's not really him. And this is, this is a picture of Alexander the Great, who was the leader of the whole world, bowing down to Shimon Tzadik. Now, why would he have bowed down to Shimon Tzadik? And the answer is because Shimon Tzadik was the Kohen Gadol. He was the great Kohen who in the Beis HaMikdash was in charge. But he wasn't just the Kohen, the Kohen Gadol. He was the leader of the Jewish people after they came back to Eretz Israel. See, there was a time when the Jewish people had to leave Israel for 70 years because they didn't follow the Torah. And that's when like the Purim story happened and they lived in Babel. And Shimon Atzadik came back with them, and he was the first Kohen Gadol when they rebuilt the Beit HaMikdash. So when there was a second Beit HaMikdash, Shimon Atzadik was the first Kohen Gadol, and he was also the leader of the Jewish people, okay? So he was around, he lived in Babel and in Eretz Yisrael. Like a lot of people, he wasn't born in Eretz Yisrael, but he got to live there afterwards because he moved to Eretz Yisrael. He made Aliyah. We say when you move to Eretz Yisrael, you're going up. So in Hebrew, that means Aliyah. So that's what he did. He moved up into Eretz Yisrael. And you can see he's wearing the clothes of the Kohen Gadol because he was the Kohen Gadol. And like we said, he was the leader of the Jewish people. But not only that, he taught everybody something very interesting. He said that the whole world rests on three things. It only stands up because of three things. Because of Torah learning, because of Avodah, which means serving Hashem, like in davening, okay, or when there's a base of Mikdash with the Korbanot, okay, al Torah, al Avoda, and an Gimimut Chasadim, which means Chesed, being nice to people, doing things like visiting them in the hospital when they're sick, having guests over, walking your guests outside the house. That's what he would do. That's what Shimon, that's what Shimon and Tzadik would do, those three things. And he said that the world can only last. If everybody is doing those three things, if everybody's learning Torah, if everybody is doing avodas Hashem, like they're davening today, and if they're doing chesed, if they're being kind to other people and doing nice things to other people. If we do all three of those things, then the world stands. But without those three things, who knows what would happen? So the world stands on those three things. Okay, that's the first rabbi that we're going to look at. Here's the second rabbi is Rabbi Akiva. Now, obviously, this is not really a picture of Rabbi Akiva. This is a drawing. And it says in like this fake drawing book, it says he lived a long time ago. He was a great man. His name was Rabbi Akiva. And Rabbi Akiva lived 2,000 years ago. 2,000 years ago. That's a long time. Now, you should know that Rabbi Akiva became a big tzaddik. But when he was born, all the way until he was 40 years old, Rabbi Akiva never studied Torah. Not only that, Rabbi Akiva didn't like rabbis. He hated them because he was really jealous that they knew all this Torah, and he never had the chance to learn Torah. But at 40 years old, he decided, I'm going to start learning Torah. So Rabbi Akiva started to, to learn Torah, but only at 40 years old. And he lived to 120, so that means that he learned Torah for 80 years. Now, Rabbi Akiva wasn't, you know, sometimes in your class, 
you'll have 10, 10 other friends, 20 friends, maybe a big class will have 30 students in it. But Rabbi Akiva's class, he had, you ready for this? 24,000 students. He had 24,000 students. Isn't that amazing? That's how amazing Rabbi Akiva was. He had 24,000 students. Now, Rabbi Akiva, when he was 40 years old, he had to learn Torah. So he wanted to go to the yeshiva. So he said to his new wife, he only got married at 40. He said, I should really learn Torah. And she said, you should really learn Torah. He said, but the yeshiva is so far away from me. How am I going to go back and forth every day? So she said, you should sleep there. He said, but if I sleep there for a night, when do I come home? So she said, Rabbi Akiva, well, she probably called him Akiva. I want you to go for 12 years. So he went for 12 years. And then when he came back, okay, when he came back after 12 years, he was about to knock on the door. He hadn't seen his wife in 12 years. And he heard her talking inside the house. The walls weren't so thick then, so you could hear people talking. And she, he heard his wife, Rachel, say, you are gone. He, Rabbi Kivo, and she was talking to her, to her friend. And she said, my husband, Akiva, has been gone for 12 years. But you know what? If he wanted to stay another 12 years, I would let him. And... Rabbi Kiva turned around, walked away, and went and studied Torah for another 12 years. And they studied Torah for 24 straight years without a break, without going home, not seeing his wife. But his wife was really happy because she knew that her husband, Akiva, was learning Torah and was going to be a big, big time chacham. And it turned out he was one of the biggest Tamdei chachamim ever. Pretty impressive. Here's our next person, it was Hillel. Hillel Hazake, they called him. Hillel, either the old person, maybe, or Hillel was the, was the wise person, okay? And he was very, very humble. In Hebrew, humble is anav, and a humble person is somebody who thinks that they're not so special. They say, I'm not that much better than the next guy. Now, Hillel was much better than the next guy. Hillel was a big tzaddik and a big time chacham. He knew more Torah than almost anybody else, but he never made other people feel like he, he knew more than them. He would always be very careful. So there was somebody that disagreed with Hillel a lot. His name was Shammai. And Hillel could have very well gotten up and given a, a shear and said, Shammai is wrong. I'm right, but that's not what he would do. The first thing he would do is teach Shammai's opinion. He would say, this is what Shammai thinks. It's not what I think, but it's what Shammai thinks. And that's what Hillel would, that's what Hillel would say. And then he would say, but let me tell you how I look at it. He wouldn't say, let me tell you why I'm right. Nope. He would say, let me tell you how I look at it. And he was so humble so modest, he would always teach Shammai's verse. Now, this is a strange picture of Hillel. What's he doing in here? I'll tell you what he's doing. Hillel was very poor, and he couldn't afford to pay to go to yeshiva. So one day, he decided he was going to listen from the roof, but it started to snow, and he fell asleep, and he slept the whole night under the snow. Maybe one day, we'll tell the story of Hillel and the snow. Okay, let's look at our next Rabbi, is someone named Rav Shimon Bar Yochai. We told the story about Rav Shimon Bar Yochai, if you remember being in the cave. But Rav Shimon Bar Yochai was very honest. He did not ever, not only did he not tell a lie, but he would always make sure that everybody knew how he felt. And one day, there were three people sitting around. Okay, there were three people sitting around. Rav Shimon Bar Yochai was one of them, and there were two other Tamidei Chachamim. And they were talking about the people who were ruling Israel at the time. It's not like today when Jews are in charge of Israel. During Rosh Hashanah's time, there were evil people named the Romans who were ruling Israel at the time. And Rosh Hashanah lived in Israel. And the first person said, I love the Romans. They built roads in Eretz Yisrael. They've built, they've made they've put places where water can go all over. So there's places to drink everywhere. The Romans are so good. And their friend, sat there, listened to it, he didn't say anything. And Rosh Hashanah said, no, it's not true. The Romans aren't good people, they're evil people, we have to tell the truth 
And they have to say that they're evil because if we don't say that they're evil, then people are going to think you should act like Romans. And the only reason why they built those roads was so that they could do more evil things. And the Romans found out and they said, that's what Roshim Bayechai said about us. We're going to kill him. So Roshim Bayechai ran away and he hid and he lived in a cave for many, 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 many years. He lived in a cave and he hid in a cave away from the Romans until it was safe for him to come back. Okay. The last rabbis we're going to talk about are actually two. It's a funny picture you have here. And the picture, I'll tell you what this picture is, okay? It is two big rabbinim, Reish Lakish and Rabbi Yochanan. Now, Reish Lakish, it's an interesting name. He was a really bad man, a really bad man. He was the worst thief in the whole wide world. The worst thief in the whole wide world. Really bad, 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 really bad person. And Rav Yochanan was the greatest person, Rav Yochanan. He was the greatest rabbi, the greatest Talmud Chacham at the time, and everybody loved him. And one day they were swimming together in a lake. They didn't realize it, but one was on one side, one was the other, and they saw each other. And Rish Lakish said to Rav Yochanan, you know, you are very good looking. You, it's a shame you're a boy. You should be a girl, and then I could marry you. Rav Yochanan said, actually, I have a sister that looks just like me. If you do tshuva and you start following the Torah and you start doing evil things, I'll let you marry my sister. And Rish Lakish did. And he started teaching Torah. Isn't that incredible? He started teaching Torah. It was amazing. And he became a big rabbi, just like Rabbi Yochanan. And they were brother-in-laws, right? They, they right? Rish Lakish married Rabbi Yochanan's sister. And since they were related, they always learned Torah together and they disagreed. And today, if you open up a sefer called a Mishnah or a Gemara, you can always find within every three pages, can't go three pages without seeing a disagreement between Rabbi Yochanan and Reish Lakish. Pretty cool, right? Okay, those were our five rabbis who we learned about. I hope you enjoyed this. Okay, and now we're going to go back. See you guys another time. Bye-bye. Okay, that was great. Let's get back to our regular background as we talk here. And then we are going to play games. So get a piece of paper and a pen ready because we are ready to play our game. This is a memory game, okay? I am going to say five words. And you write down the five words and then send them here. Here we go, you ready? First word is peace. Second is secret. Third is Torah. Fourth is snow. And fifth is chesed. Okay, I'm going to say it one more time. Peace, secret, Torah, snow, and chesed. Send those five words to this email address and you can win raffle tickets to win a prize. Okay, last, let's get do one more giveaway for raffle tickets. We'll do two raffle tickets. If you send me this week's Parsha to this email address, you can win two raffle tickets. All right, excellent. Okay, don't forget, that's the end of our show, but don't forget, in Shul, you can pick up the Shabbat fun letter, which has Divrei Torah and jokes and games and did you know and ways to win so many more raffle tickets and you can win prizes. That's the end of our show for today. I hope you liked it. Shalom.